Hello and welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of everyone that is helping to lead worship today, we welcome you. We're so glad that you are joining in this time of worship and uh, we want to extend a special welcome to anyone who may be joining with us for the first time in online worship. We're especially pleased that you've chosen Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church and we encourage you and everyone to use our contact form. The link to that is pinned right in the comments section and there's a QR code for it. This is a wonderful way that we can get to know each other, that uh, we can connect up with you in faith and love and service and life. There's a special place there for you to make sure to put your email address so that we can send you the e-newsletter. It has all of the information about things going on with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. And on that contact form is also a place for you to put prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and prayer team. So please, everyone, use that contact form today. Now, when we do join together for online worship, we join together in a covenant to participate and to be a blessing. Our covenant to participate means that we're going to participate in what it is we're doing today in worship. Uh, we encourage you to turn off other devices and other distractions, to really focus in, to remember that we're worshiping together. It's not just a random video that you're watching. So when it's time to pray, please pray. When it's time to sing, join us in singing. Just fully participate in what it is we're doing today. And our covenant to be a blessing means that the way that we are in our comment section, the way we may be gathered with other people, the way we're sending all of this out into the world this time of worship, we want it to be a blessing for everyone that is involved. So that's our covenant to participate and to be a blessing. Now, today we are starting a new worship series called Turn the Page, as we're going to explore the Bible and ways to read and understand what's in the Bible. We're going to have a lot of fun and learn a lot as we go along over these weeks. And I just encourage you, if you have a Bible, to have it with you so that you can refer to it. We'll be using our Bibles. Maybe you have a Bible app you like to use. So we want to get that ready as we continue now in worship. Welcome. Good morning. My name is Cindy Arnold, and I am a member here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm also a member of the Young Adult Sunday School and a member of the Community Garden as well. Please join me in a spirit of prayer. God of understanding and truth, be with us in this time of worship. Open our minds to receive your wisdom. Open our hearts to accept your love. Open our spirits to embrace your ways. Be present with us as we seek your guidance, that we may follow in the footsteps of your living word, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now please join with me in sharing the peace of Christ. You can say, peace be with you, and respond, and also with you. You can share that in the comments, with each other, with me, and with these folks in our church community. Peace be with you. Hi, I'm Sue Greenfield. This is my granddaughter, Patience Greenfield. Peace, Peace be, be with, with you. you. Hi, I'm Ruth Hose. I belong to the church here for over 20 years. I belong to Miriam's Circle. I'm on trustees and I'm in Zephyr's Sunday School class. Peace be with you. Good morning, everybody. We are the Mansies. I'm Brian. My name is Cameo. I'm Mason. I'm Colton. And I'm Cutter. Peace, Peace be, be with, with you. you. Easy. 
you know what time it is. It is time for small talk. I want to encourage all the children who may be joining with us to just come in really close to your device and to your screen so that you can see and hear absolutely everything that goes on with small talk. This time is led by Miss Laurie, our Director of Children and Youth Ministries, and her wonderful assistant, Laud the Lamb. So let's get ready right now for small talk. He only had three legs, <clears throat> one eye. He liked to listen to country music. He was quite tall and slim. He smelled really, really bad. That morning he got up early and hadn't had any coffee and he was always getting up to mischief. He was a hanky panky, cranky, stinky, dinky, lanky, honky, tonky, winky, wonky, donkey. Uh, oh, hi everyone. It is Miss Lori and Laud the Lamb and his friend Donkey today because we were reading their favorite book, The Wonky Donkey. The main character in that book is, of course, the donkey. You guys have probably realized that books have main characters, right? Even this book. This book has lots of awesome stories in it. And the main character in this book is, no, not a sheep, not a donkey, but God. God is the main character in this book. He tells us how he made the world, led people out of Israel, sent us Jesus, our commandments. It's all about God. Just like this book is telling us about donkey's story, this book is telling us God's story. So each week, we're going to be talking a little bit more about this book called the Bible. So find yours at home. Have a great week, everybody, and start exploring some stories. Please join us in singing My Lighthouse.
us through the storms, far before us, you're the brightest, you lead us through the storms, far before us, you're the brightest, you lead us through the storms, far before us, you're the brightest, you Good morning, this is John Watt. Our first reading from the Bible today is from the Old Testament, and it is Psalm 1. Let us open our hearts and minds to hear what God is saying to us through all of our Bible readings. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or take the path that sinners tread or sit in the seat of scoffers, but their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that are blown and wind drove, drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Hi, my name is Erin Emery, and I'm a member of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Our next reading from the Bible is also found in the Old Testament. It is Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Hi, I'm Hi. Anderson. This is my baby brother, Eden Anderson. And... Hi, my name's Aya Anderson. Mm -hmm. Our next reading from the Bible, Bible is the New Testament. It is from the letter called 2 Timothy. I will read chapter 3, verses 16 through 17. Ah! All scriptures is inspired by God and is useful for his teaching, for showing mistakes, for correcting in our for training character so that stop. let's try that again and for training character so that the person who belongs to god can be equipped to do everything that is good bye bye i'm evan and i sit in the peel <laughs> bye <laughs> my name's Daya. <laughs> Hi, my name is Trisha Kumach, and our final reading from the Bible is also from the New Testament. It is the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 17 through 19. Jesus said, Don't even begin to think that I have come to do away with the law and prophets. I haven't come to do away with them, but to fulfill them. 
I say to you very seriously that as long as heaven and earth exist, neither the smallest letter nor even the smallest stroke of a pen will be erased from the law until everything there becomes a reality. May God bless our hearing and understanding of all the Bible readings we have received today. Amen. Over the next six weeks, we are going to spend time in worship looking at the best-selling book of all time, the Bible. I'm calling this Turn the Page as we explore the various parts of the Bible and the writings within the Bible, and we'll learn some ways to read and understand what's in the Bible. I hope that you will join with us each and every week, and I encourage you to have your own Bible or your Bible app available to you as we do this exploration. And please invite your friends, too, to join with us and bring your questions. We may not get to every question you have each week, so feel free to post those in the comments or email them to me or to the church office, and I'll do my best to respond online and email back to you as well during the week. This Turn the Page series grows out of our Bible Sunday celebration that we had way back in September. We received a lot of response that went something like, more, let's do more on this. I want to learn more about my Bible and use my Bible more. So we're gonna work on that together. I'm gonna start us off today by reiterating some of what we learned back in September so that we are all on the same page, so to speak, and can turn the page better. Get it? Did you get what I did there? Same page, turn the page? Yeah, okay. Okay, so let's jump in with our first question of turn the page. What is the Bible? The Bible is a historical collection of writings and songs, histories, sayings, and remembrances collected over thousands of years by hundreds of people. The Bible is not written by a single human author or source. As a matter of fact, most of the writings of the Bible are anonymous. The Bible that we read in our modern translations and languages is a final revision of thousands of years of collecting and editing, adding and subtracting of whole books and selections and stories. Parts of the Bible date back to oral tradition before writing and existed in the folk memory of God's people for generations, long before they were ever written down in any form, not to mention in the translations that we read today. That is why with all of these people involved in its telling and writing and editing, it's important to pay attention to original sources and authors and editors as best we can to help us understand the Bible. Now, with all of that said, with all of this intricate textual history, Christians believe that all of the people involved, from authors to editors to storytellers to compilers, that all of them were inspired and guided by God's Spirit to produce the Bible that we have today. What's in the Bible? Here's my study Bible. The Bible has two major divisions. The Old Testament, which makes up most of the Bible. It's this big chunky section here in the front. And then the New Testament, which is here at the end. You can see that's kind of a much thinner spot. Now, some Bibles also have a third section. You can see mine does right here in the middle. This is called the Apocrypha or Deuterocanonical books. Deuterocanonical means secondary collection. These are Old Testament books that are accepted as authoritative by some Christians, notably Roman Catholics, but not by all Christians, notably Protestants, like us United Methodists, or by Jews. As we do this next bit, you may find it helpful to look at the table of contents in your Bible. The Old Testament is the holy book of Judaism and is traditionally broken into three sections. The Torah, or law, made up the, of the first five books of the Bible, sometimes also called the Pentateuch, which is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Then there's the prophets, which also includes the histories with books like Joshua, 1st and 2nd Samuel, and then the major prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel. We heard some verses of Jeremiah earlier. And then there are minor prophets. They're called the minor prophets. That's Hosea through Malachi. And then there are the writings, which includes the wisdom books like Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Job, and the rest of the books like 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Esther, and Daniel. We heard a reading of Psalm 1 earlier from the writings. The New Testament, remember, much shorter, covers the life of Jesus and the writings of the early church leaders. It is traditionally broken into three sections. 
the Gospels, or Good News, which tell of Jesus' life and teachings, death and resurrection, and include the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and then connects in the Acts of the Apostles, which is like volume two of Luke. We heard a reading from the Gospel of Matthew earlier. Then there's the letters, or epistles, which were written by early church leaders to provide advice and guidance to the first Christians. These include letters written to churches like Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, and Philippians, Letters to individuals like 1st and 2nd Timothy. We read from 2nd Timothy earlier. And then general letters like James and 1st and 2nd Peter. Then there's the Revelation to John, which only includes the one book that we often just call Revelation. This is a singular book, both in its style and content and in the method needed for reading. Within all of these books, Old Testament to New Testament, we can find many different kinds of writings encompassing all kinds of genres and styles. These writings come from many different cultures through several different languages with sometimes strange and unfamiliar imagery and contexts. I believe that many of the misreadings and misunderstandings of the Bible come from a failure to appreciate the genre and the context of its writings, which is why we are going to work hard at learning and remembering our first and only rule of Bible study. We've learned this before, and it's important. So it's the starting place of our Turn the Page series, and it is this. Read it as it is for what it is. Say that with me. Read it as it is for what it is. And if you were taking a moment off, let's try it one more time. Read it as it is for what it is. By this, I mean when we read poetry, we need to read it as poetry and not as science. When someone writes that they had a dream, we need to read it as a dream and not as a documentary of the future. It's important to read all of the Bible and learn what it says about itself, to pay attention to what it might have meant for its original audience's culture and context, and to read the genres as the genres that they are. We're going to try this out by looking at a poetic metaphor in the Bible. There are so many amazing, beautiful, powerful sections of our Bible that are poetry and metaphor. Sometimes we have difficulty recognizing the sections of poetry because our translations too often lose the meter and the rhythm of the original ancient languages in the poetic form. The book of Psalms, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, and many of the prophets, they include long sections of poetry. We're going to take a look at a beautiful, powerful, and oft-quoted metaphor from the prophet Jeremiah that was read for us earlier. We're looking at Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 33. So find this in your Bible now if you'd like to. Again, that's Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 33. Most of chapter one in Jeremiah is an extended poem looking toward the return of the people of Israel from exile and is a celebration of a utopian restoration filled with joy and comfort, beautiful language and striking imagery. Verse 33 is a part of the proclamation of a new way of living out God's covenant or God's eternal promises with God's people. So Jeremiah writes in chapter 31, verse 33, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they will be my people. God will write it on their hearts. That's beautiful. Because this is a metaphor, in the midst of this whole poetic section, we know that Jeremiah is not is suggesting that God is going to take a writing instrument and pluck out a person's heart and carve God's law onto it and put the heart back in. We know this because this metaphor lives within a powerful poetic proclamation of God's creation of love and fidelity with the people so that everyone will not only know, but fully integrate God's love and fidelity into their lives, creating restoration, equality, justice, and egalitarian society for all people. We know these things because we read the rest of Jeremiah and pay attention to the context of this metaphor. And we know that poetry uses rich imagery and metaphors like this. That's what makes it powerful and beautiful and meaningful. 
I know that this may seem like just a really basic idea, but I think it's surprising how often what is obviously metaphorical and or poetry in our Bible is read and explained as if it were a technical handbook or a historical description. From the creation hymn at the beginning of Genesis and the poetry of Psalms to the dreams described in Revelation, too often these powerful and deeply metaphorical poems and writings are lifted out of their context and then used and misused. This is why it's important to read the Bible as it is for what it is, because that is when the full power of the Bible is made real. The Bible is the word of God when it is read as such. When we engage the Bible as God's word in the fullness and richness and variety of its forms and genres, with the depth of its context, we then engage the living word of God brought to life in the power of the Holy Spirit. And that has power to inform, explain, challenge, and gift God's love into people's life, to write God's love on their heart. The Bible has power to change lives, and that is why it has authority for us and for God's people from generation to generation. I know this experience in my own life. I know that many of you do as well. I find that when I read the Bible and I pray with scripture and I engage in study with other people and on my own, my faith grows that I'm comforted, I'm challenged, the truth about God's love and purposes for my life and for others comes into focus, and I'm called and I'm equipped to live as a faithful follower of Jesus Christ. I find it incredibly powerful to engage God's word in scripture because it's not just about God, and it's not just about me, or just about me and God, or even just about my church and God. For generations and generations, faithful people have encountered the living God through the Bible. People from all times and places, people of all genders and sexual identities, people of all nations and languages and races and ages. When I engage the Bible, I become a part of that story, that experience, that common discussion with faithful people around the world. The Bible is just alive in this way. It's not a weapon to use to hurt and exclude other people. It's not just a record of what God has done in the past. The Bible tells us who we are and whose we are. The Bible calls, equips, and inspires us to love and follow Jesus, to be a part of God's purposes of love and mercy and justice throughout all of God's creation. So we're going to continue over these weeks to explore the Bible together, and I sure hope that you will join us each week for this adventure. Next week, we'll consider the question, is the Bible true? I encourage you to put your questions in the comment section and to invite a friend to join with us as we continue to turn the page. Amen. Please join me in singing Thy Word.
I'm Nancy Vereen, lay leader at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Could you join me in the spirit of prayer? Dear God, precious Father, we come to you today to offer praise for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. It is with a sense of gratitude that we accept your gifts. Many of our hearts are heavy. So many of us and so many of our families and friends are ill and many are hospitalized. COVID is rampant and we ask for comfort and healing to all those who are affected. We pray that you will protect their families as they provide care. Be with those who have had recent surgeries. Touch them with your healing hand. Be with all of those who are working on their recovery. Give them your powerful healing and resistance. Especially be with our associates of Wouldn't It Be Lovely. Help them to break the bonds of addiction so that they can find their way home. As we celebrate Martin Luther King Day this week, we ask that you purify our hearts so that we may see thee. O oh God, in these turbulent days when fear and doubt are mounting high, give us broad vision, penetrating eyes, and power of endurance. Help us to work with renewed vigor for a warless world, for a better distribution of wealth, and for a brotherhood that transcends race or color. As we ponder all of these thoughts, let us go to God in prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Your giving and all the ways that you give of yourself, your time, and your finances into the ministries of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, those are making a world of difference each and every day. I thank you for all the ways that you're generous and encourage you to continue to give your financial gifts to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. You can do that through our online giving portal. The link to that is right in the comment section and there's a QR code for it as well. Uh, I encourage you to uh, send in your checks directly to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. You can also set up automatic giving, either with your financial institution or with ours. If you need help with that, just let us know in the church office. I also encourage you again to use that contact form so that we can connect with you and connect you in all of the ways that you can be in service and grow in your faith. I want to lift up a couple of things for you today just to remember. Beginning today and continuing through this week, Douglas Avenue United Methodist uh, Church joins with United Methodists throughout our country in the Human Relations Day offering in celebration of the birth of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Offering, uh, the offering supports programs, community workers, and missionaries that work in racial, ethnic, and multicultural communities to empower underserved communities and transform unjust systems. You can give today to this needed and powerful ministry by using uh, Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church's online giving portal. Just choose Human Relations Day in the dot, drop down menu or mail in your check to Douglas Avenue uh, and just put Human Relations Day in the memo line. You can learn, learn more about United Methodist Human Relations Day offering through the e-newsletter. I also want to remind you that this week, a new Grief Share support group will begin meeting online on Tuesday, January 18th at 6.30 p.m. Grief Share offers help and encouragement after the death of a loved one, and you can expect helpful videos featuring leading grief experts, uh, small group discussions, and a workbook for journaling and reflection. For more information and registration, see the e-newsletter, contact Doreen Kyleen, who's our group leader, or contact the church office. As we live in this time of increased COVID infections, hospitalizations, and deaths in our region, we are doing everything we can at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church to promote health and safety in our community. We will continue to meet almost all of our worship small groups and ministries online for the month of January. We appreciate your support, your prayers, and your continued connecting and participating in our life-changing ministries in these ways. 
We're gonna hear now from our very own friendly neighborhood infection prevention man, Joe Johnson, on ways to live out Jesus's direction to love our neighbor as ourselves at this time. Good morning, I'm Joe Johnson, and I am the co-chair of the Missions Committee along with my wife, Rebecca, here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I also work at HSH of St. John's Hospital here in town as part of the infection prevention team. And today, I want to share a few ways in which we can live out Jesus' call on us to love and care for our neighbors as ourselves and fulfill one of John Wesley's general rules of do no harm in this time of rising COVID-19 cases due to the Omicron variant. The Omicron variant of the COVID-19 virus spreads more easily than the original version of the virus. So it is truly important that we continue to do all we can to protect ourselves and the community. Please get vaccinated and boosted when eligible. Vaccination is still effective at preventing severe outcomes from COVID-19. Publicly released numbers by HSHS system show that system-wide 70 to 80% of hospitalized COVID patients are unvaccinated. It's also important that you wear a medical face mask instead of just a cloth face covering because cloth face coverings don't provide as much protection for you against the more transmissible Omicron COVID-19 variant. Now, additionally, let's remember that practicing the three W's to prevent the spread of COVID-19 cases are still important. So what's the first W? Watch your distance. Practice physical distancing when possible by staying at least six feet from other people who are not from your household in public settings and avoiding crowds. Second, wash your hands. Wash your hands using soap and water for 20 seconds with good scrubbing, or if you're using an alcohol-based sanitizer, making sure it contains at least 60% alcohol and rubbing until dry. Now good times to wash your hands include after being in a public space, before, during, and after preparing food, and after blowing your nose, coughing, or sneezing. And then the third W, wear your mask. Wear your mask, and again, we're talking about a medical face mask and not just a cloth face covering. In public settings is an important tool also to help you keep your community and yourself safe. Now, when you wear your mask, it's best to wash your hands before putting it on. And then you wanna make sure it fits snugly against the sides of your face and covers both your nose and your mouth. I do want to point out that the CDC does not recommend children below the age of two wearing face masks. And in the end, I want to thank you so much for your time and for your continued love for our community. Thank you and peace be with you. Please join us in singing O Zion Haste.
Thank you for joining in online worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. It's been such a wonderful time together, and I'm so pleased that you were here. I hope that you will continue to join with us for online worship every uh, every week. It's right here on Facebook, and, and you can find it on YouTube as well. We are meeting a very brief in-person worship experience in the sanctuary at 1030 on Sunday mornings, and you can join us then as well. Again, I want to encourage you to use that contact form. Remember to put your contact information there so that we can connect with you and be a part of your growing life of faith and service in our world. And remember that there's a place there to put your prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. We love to pray with you and to connect with you in that way. So please do use that today. And as you go into your day, go knowing that the living word of God goes with you, that God is with you, that God loves you, that Jesus Christ is with you and loves you, that the Holy Spirit is working to open your heart to help you to see and understand how God is leading you in your life of service and love into our world. So go in peace to love and serve our God. Amen. Amen.